We have a great pleasure to talk with George Thomas, CEO and Price from Connected DMV. It's a really pleasure to meet you. Thank you, Isabella. It's really nice to talk to you as well. Thank you for taking the time. George, how can we prepare the next generation to work with quantum technologies? Oh, that's a very good and tough question. Quantum technologies, like a lot of new deep technologies, it requires a lot of expertise and a lot of skills to end up with a PhD degree. It could be in physics, it could be in chemistry, it could be in related things. But if you look at the workforce, if we have a quantum company of a hundred people, you need four people who are PhD. You need another 20 that are engineers who don't need to know the physics. And you need another 30, 40 of people who are in the business of selling, making, doing. And the rest are regular, you know, industry sectors like accounting, marketing, things like that. So when you say to get into quantum, you could either go, I want to be a physicist and work in the science and the research, or I could be an engineer to make the devices and make systems and make sensors. So there's a lot of opportunities, but kids these days have to start younger and younger. So seventh, eighth grade, they start making a decision on whether they want to do science, arts, or commerce. So it's at that stage. So the education is very, it's broader than just quantum. Because it's true for AI ML, it's true for you know, machines, it's true for sensor, manufacturing jobs. So all of that comes to place. So a lot of jobs are because of that, uh, not necessarily directly in. Yes. And what role does international cooperation play in shaping the future of quantum innovation? This is again a very, very good question. Uh, so when we say quantum, it's four kind of industries on the ground. And there's the one everybody knows about, which is quantum computing. Uh, but there's also quantum sensing, which is very large industry, arguably more than quantum computing. And then there's quantum materials and then communication, which is satellite, cryptography, quantum networks, quantum internet. And they're very different industries, which are very different skills. Uh, nobody can be good at everything. Uh, even within computing, nobody can be good at this. There are seven or eight platforms that you can make a quantum computer. So nations have to cooperate to get their expertise, to pick their lanes, to figure out what they're good at, and then share that knowledge, work together to establish companies. It's a cooperation and competition that has happened. But it cannot be done in one country or even one continent alone. It will require all of the major countries in the world and many of the small countries in the world that have their particular levels of expertise to work together in the world. How are the public and private sectors working together to build in an ecosystem prepared for the quantum era? Great question. Um, we live in a complicated, more complicated than normal geopolitical world. But quantum, among a few other things, is one of those technologies that seems not to be affected by the geopolitics because of how important it is to all of the countries who are playing. So in each country and you know organizations like the European Union and the African Union and others, there is conversations on funding and developing their capabilities, their companies, their can. And that's happened. That's competition among the law and world. But there's also cooperation happening between the regions and the countries to kind of move forward. And in each country, the private sector is working with their governments, and there are some large multinationals that are working with multiple countries. So there is an usual mix of money flowing from private industry to private industry, money flowing from public to private industry, and also the investment community has been tremendous. Like if there's four pure play companies now, and their stocks have gone through the roof in the last year. Uh, the latest one was inflection, which just went with a stack with a public valuation of 1.8 billion dollars. So it is incredible. One, continuous, which is the Honeywell uh, uh, startup that uh, uh, the, uh, the Continuum company is now worth 10.8 billion. I think it's the latest one. So we are really seeing investment come in, faint comments in the market with regards to all that money is going to have a direct impact on speed and scale of how how much more quicker, you will see results. Amazing. And what 
initiatives are being discussed to expand Wendland education and talent development. So I think as of 2023, there were already 50 master's programs in quantum computing, which is incredible technology that's relatively new to the commercial market, even though quantum mechanics is 100 years old, we're celebrating as everybody knows. Uh, the UN declared 2025 International Year of Quantum Technology. The science is 100 years old, but 1994-ish is when quantum became commercially wide. So that's really helping uh, the mechanics of what's happening. But if you take 1994, it's 2025. That's not a lot of years for an industry to completely become like just in the laboratory to like we just talked about billion dollar companies. And this billion dollar companies are pure place. If you look at the big corporations like Microsoft, and IBM and others, this is just a division, so it's not even reported how big those divisions are. But there is a lot of interest, a lot of building, a lot of buying going on. And I will also stress on the other side of it. So whenever there's new technology, there are people who are building solutions using the technology. Like in compute, it's iron fuel, it's continuum, IBM. Uh, and then in sensing, there are a number of companies. In networking, there are not. But the bigger part of the investment that's happening is from the eventual buyers. Yes, they're talking Lockheed Martin, Boeing, Cleveland Clinic. Companies that are, have missions to serve, like Cleveland Clinic is a healthcare organization. Their mission is to save lives and provide better healthcare. The amount they had invested in quantum shows you the value of the buyer community and the mission community about it. So it's not just about what it's the press about the company, the tech companies are getting, it's the other larger universe. So it is all starting to come together. And which quantum locations are close to real-world implementation? So this is always the tricky aspect of it because quantum is just science at the subatomic. There are many, many ways to act, apply it. So when this question is asked, uh, it started because of our culture of applications and software. When you need a killer app to develop a product, Quantum is seeped into so many aspects of our science and engineering in our period. I don't think there'll be one killer application that will make that happen. It'll be a sequence of stuff across many different things. But just, you know, as a point of fact, the biggest quantum computing spaces is in life sciences, in the financial services industry, and in defense, aerospace and defense, is where the biggest use cases are being worked on and experimented on. And people are going to see And that's just not a computer. Similarly, in sensing, arguably advanced sensing is using some levels of quantum applications. So traditional classical measurement systems are advancing by themselves so fast. Quantum control sensors you know, have a lot of work to kind of showcase what they're doing. But across the four the streams of what one might want to tell quantum industries, there's a lot of advancements going on. And we start seeing uh, you know, use cases that deliver value out there. And even outside of what I would call kind of pure quantum, there are opportunities that are happening. So we have, for example, in computing, we have to protect our classical computing systems from attacks from a quantum field. This is this whole domain called post-quantum cryptography. It's not quantum, but it is an entire field that's developed because quantum is. So it's a complicated answer, I know, but there is a lot of opportunity and a lot of businesses being built to take care of all those things. Definitely. And how do you foresee the evolution of intersection between quantum computing, artificial intelligence in cybersecurity, and climate solutions over the next years? So we just talked about cybersecurity. So, you know, the post quantum cryptography is one element of it. There's another element of it where you use quantum science itself to solve for it. It's called QKD. Uh, so both of those you know, cyber security world that's going on. The whole conversation with AI ML is a lot more nuanced and complicated because you could argue that you could make AI help move quantum faster in discovery of what we're doing. And on the flip side, you could use quantum to do more things in AI. So there's a very interesting kind of mix of where they would help each other. And I'll use one example, like energy use. One of the big things that everybody talks about and is the big issue is the amount of energy it takes to create AI data centers and run AI data centers. And when quantum comes along, it's going to, the debate is, is it going to make it worse or is it going to make it better because quantum potentially uses less energy 
to achieve similar performance. But we are not there yet. So in the near term, we may be using more. So this is again not settled debate, but this is what the energy companies, the people in working in the data center, they all kind of looking at to kind of see how far do you do something that you don't care how much it costs, don't care how much energy it uses, because you can see in five, ten years that's going to help the overall. So those debates are happening in rooms around the world trying to figure out. And the one thing I will also say is quantum is one technology. There are many others that have to advance at the same time. And because many others have to advance at the same time, where there is opportunities at the intersection of those technologies, and where there is kind of a lot of chaos that's going to happen is one of them might advance significantly fast, and then that will influence what happens in other ways. So it's it's a complicated. I think we are living in an era when so much new technology is happening in so many different arenas. All of the same way, and the biggest rally that we are seeing is when unknowingly they collide versus just the investment in them. I am sure not in general policy. Yes. Thank you so much, George. It's a pleasure to talk. It's so this real important moment at Quantum World Congress. Thank you so much. I appreciate participating at this great Quantum Revolution. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, Isabella. Thank you so much. And we welcome everybody from Brazil to come to Quantum World Congress next year as well. It's going to be again in here. You know, we have delegation from 30 countries, including Brazil, already. But it will be fantastic to have more come and participate in this world. Thank you, thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks.